As a friendly reminder, here are the genetics problem rules we've used. Remember, you must have a key for the letters, show the genotypes of the parents, show your work in a Punnett square, answer what the question is asking, circle the answers to the questions. Epistasis. This involves a single trait, but two genes at a different loci, which is a fancy word for location on a single chromosome. One gene will control the trait, while the other will turn the first gene on or off, depending on the genotype. Remember, epi means on. This changes how we read the phenotype, but not how we would do the problem. Keep in mind, the first gene will be for the trait. For example, here we have color. Capital R is purple, little r is white. This shows complete dominance. Gene 2 is what we call the controlling gene. This is what makes this an epistasis problem. Capital N, the gene is on, and the flower will either be purple or white. Little n, the gene is off, and we get what we call albino. Now some of you may be thinking albino is white, and that is not true. Albino means the absence of any color. White does have some pigment. As you can see down here, capital R means purple, and it must have at least one capital N in order to express that purple. To have white, we need homozygous recessive, little r, little r, and a capital N. Our third phenotype is we have the recessive controlling gene turned off, which means we will result in an albino, the absence of color. Two unlinked loci affect mouse hair color. Homozygous dominant or heterozygous mice are agouti, which is brown. Mice with genotype homozygous recessive little a little a are albino because all pigment production is blocked, regardless of the phenotype at the second locus. At the second locus, the capital B allele agouti coat is dominant to the little b allele black coat. What would be the result of a cross between two agouti mice of the genotype heterozygous for both loci? First, we need to make our key. Capital A, will result in the color being turned on. In this example, we're showing you that the controlling gene is listed first. Little a is off. Some students like to write color and no color. To help them with these. Capital B means brown and the recessive allele little b is for the black coat. Now you'll notice with epistasis problems they will have 16 squares much like a dihybrid. The difference is they have the controlling on off switch. Remember our parents are heterozygous for both traits. And remember, we need to FOIL first, outer, inner, and last. Notice, because the parents are the same, our FOILing will be the same. As you can see, I'm filling in the alleles for one parent at a time. Now I'll fill in going across.
Now the question says, what would be the result of a cross between two agouti mice of the genotype heterozygous for both traits? If we look at our phenotypes, we have nine, which will be agouti, These all have a capital A, meaning the color is turned on, and a capital B. Then we have 3 out of 16, which will have the black fur. These are all homozygous recessive for color, and again, a capital A. And last but not least, 4 out of 16 will be albino. This is the new phenotype that we've learned about. These will be homozygous, little a, little a, for no color. And the second trait does not matter. As again, no matter which color has been turned off, therefore, they are albino, the absence of color. Our last problem. In wheat kernels, the R allele confers red color, and the little r allele, brown kernel color. The big B gene controls the expression of the R gene. Corn of genotype homozygous recessive, little b, little b, will have white kernels. If a red kernel wheat plant with the genotype heterozygous for color and heterozygous for the epistasis on off loci is fertilized by a brown wheat plant, homozygous recessive and heterozygous for on-off, what type of wheat plants are produced? Again, we need to make our key. Keep in mind, capital R is red, little r is brown, capital B, the gene is turned on, little b, it is white or off. Again, we're looking at less color. Here are parents, and again, we need to foil. We'll go with our first, outer, inner, and our last letters. Again, first, outer, inner, and last. As you'll notice, I need to adjust some of these squares. And I'll fill in the other parents' alleles.
Now again, the question is, if a red kernel wheat plant with the genotype heterozygous for each loci is fertilized by brown wheat plant, homozygous recessive for color, and heterozygous for the on-off, what type of wheat plants are produced? We're looking at the phenotypes. We would have 6 out of 16 are red, 6 out of 16 are brown, 4 out of 16 are white, If we look at this, the 6 out of 16, which are red, have a capital R and a capital B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Our 6 brown are homozygous recessive, little r, little r for brown, and a capital B. 1, 2, 3, four, five, and six. Then, irregardless of what the color is for red or brown, we'll look at our next phenotype, which is homozygous recessive for white, which means the color gene is turned off. So if we have a little b, little b, like we do here, and here, and here, and here. No matter what the color gene was, it is turned off. And that results in this problem in a white phenotype. As in our previous problem, it was albino.